New products. First up, our weekly new, segment new, 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 that new. we're doing is uh, sort of new, but it's Journey to the Center of the Catalog. Um, this is our weekly uh, segment that we do inside of new products now, where we revisit a really old product that we wanted to take a new yes. photo of. <laughs> so, Wait, where should we reshoot the photos? This week? This, look, it's not that I didn't take good photos, but I didn't take good photos. So, well, we should be do, doing the photos. Yeah. More dramatic lighting. So this is the TV Be Gone, one of the most popular and fun kits to do. Lots of people like to make the TV Be Gone in workshops. Mitch Altman, who was a guest on the show just a couple of weeks yeah, ago, uh, co-designed the kit with Lady Ada here. Mm -hmm. um, one this of is a great learning to solder kit. It's under 20 bucks. It's learn to solder with this kit, and you can turn off TVs from yeah. 300 feet away. It's okay. so much fun. All right, so now on to the real new things. Okay. This is a giant battery. <laughs> it's not that giant. It's actually a canned held. It's a little uh, pocket battery pack. And um, we have a couple larger battery packs. We have the 4400 and the 10,000 milliamp hour. This is like a 2200 milliamp hour. Um, but what I like about this is that I actually tested like a, a large number of these. I have like a box of these um, guys. And this is the only one that actually had a really good solid five volt, one amp output. Like the other ones drooped or really noisy. This one is like, Guaranteed 501. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's like the real deal. There's there's all these little slim ones, but if you actually measure the current output, as you get beyond like 300 milliamps, like it starts like dropping really fast. Like you don't get a nice steady 5 volts. This one, this yeah. is the pro model. It, it's a little more expensive. It's a little bit bigger, but it's way better quality. So this is really good for powering um, Arduino projects, Raspberry Pi projects, BeagleBone project, projects. It's rechargeable. Um, you know, you you. I don't know that you can use it as a UPS. I don't suggest it because oftentimes these the output flickers when you uh, plug in to get charged. But it's great for like if you just want to make a portable project. Yeah, one of the things that you know we focus on the positive here at Adafruit. But if you yeah. guys can only see the bucket of awful, so to get to the best product, we have to go through a ton. And you know they're just crummy batteries out there. I mean, like I gave them away to people like who worked here because they're just like, well, they're totally. It's fine for it's, like charging your iPhone. It's yeah. just you you wouldn't we, want to use it with Arduino or we Pi sell it and a lot of people use the stuff for very important things yeah so um, anyways the bucket of mistakes are always bucket of mistakes yeah. bucket of giveaways. okay next up so one of the benefits of working here is you get the bucket of giveaways yeah. um, okay we've got uh, B plus stacky headers yay I ordered these as soon as I found out about the Raspberry Pi B plus and now we has them um, these are 2 by 20 super tall sockets you can see it here plugged into the Raspberry Pi model B plus and um, they're, the headers are extra tall, so um, the sockets extend uh, beyond the USB port, so you can have a PCB that's larger, you know, large enough that it covers the entire size of the sides of the Pi. And the headers are extra long, so when you have a PCB soldered on, you can also plug something in. So that's kind of nice. Okay. Next up. Uh, we also have its sister, the extra tall but not stacky header. This one is just has short little pins. Yeah. Um, good for making like a pie hat or a pie plate or shield or whatever. Again, it's extra tall so the, the PCB can be taller than the USB and um, Ethernet jacks, which is handy if you want an extra tall um, add-on board. And uh, the pins are not super long. So you have to clip them. You can just put a yeah. PCB on and solder them in. Okay, next up. Nine off. This is the uh, nine degree uh, of, of freedom board, the LSM 90S0 for Flora. Um, this little chip has a three axis compass, accelerometer, and magnetometer all in one. It doesn't even require that many extra um, capacitors or resistors. You see them here. Uh, it uses I squared C, which makes it perfect for Flora. And so we have a um, breakout for Flora, so you can do uh, all sorts of sensing and motion. Uh, detection uh, with your wearable. That would be very handy. And um, yeah, great for almost any kind of project. Uh, you know, we'll eventually be discontinuing probably the um, the LSM 303 just because this this one kind of does it all and it's uh, the chip is super solid and we've got a great library for it. Okay. Next up. Oh, we also have the breakout for it, which the photo didn't make it in here. But that's okay. We also have a breakout version of the... Oh. It's, uh, yeah, because all, it's all blue. But I have oh. it here. I can show it on the uh, overhead. Okay. So instead of being round, black, and sewable, it's blue and rectangular. Blue and square and breadboardable. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Um, yeah, when well, I first forgot to send you the photo. Um, but this is the uh, LSM 9DS0. Um, can I zoom in or is it on? Yeah, zoom in. Okay. Go for it. 
Sometimes it doesn't auto uh, focus. Um, this is the LSM 90S0 chip on the in the center, and we have all the breakouts and four mounting holes. So again, this is nine degrees of freedom, three. Uh, access accelerometer, magnetometer, and compass, so it's really good for like all sorts of measurements and motion. And it does I squared C and SPI. We have level shifting and three volt regulator. It plugs into a breadboard very nicely. Um, it's five volt safe, so you can use it with Arduino or Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone or whatever. Um, we have a really good library for this in tutorial that we wrote, and we're also porting uh, a, a motion AHRS system so that you can actually like, you rotate it and, and the computer actually knows which way you're pointing. So really cool space age technology and it's like like under 30 bucks now. So it's okay. amazing. All, All right. right, and then. And then uh, finally. And then finally, what's this thing? Temp 007, the thermopile, the Fable thermopile. This is um, the upgrade for the TMP006 sensor from TI. This sensor uh, allows you to measure the temperature of something without touching it. It actually like reads the IR bouncing off an object to do like non-touching temperature sensing. So like, you know, sometimes you'll see like those um, FLIR cameras. This is like a single point uh, uh, IR camera. And um, I have a basic demo of it set up that I can show on the okay, overhead. Okay, let's do this. What's nice about this sensor compared to the TMP006 is that um, this version has the all the math calculation in inside the chip. You used to have to do all this like logarithmic square root craziness. You don't do that anymore. You can actually just read the temperature directly from the I squared C register. Uh, and also it's a little bit better at handling uh, temperature changes. It has a little bit uh, better um, uh, uh, management of like when you know the temperature spikes or, or drops. It can just handle a little bit, be a bit better. It used to be like you'd see like overshoots of like 20 degrees and then it would settle. Um, now it doesn't overshoot much at all. So you can see if I'm, I'm not touching it, I'm just putting my hand over it. It can detect that my hand, which is warmer than the air outside, that's about 30 degrees C. Um, and when I move my hand away, it goes back to measuring the ambient air, which is about 21 degrees here. So yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting sensor. It's like if you want to measure something but without touching, uh, this is like basically the easiest way to do it. Um, and it's pretty low cost. Use I squared C. And you know we have Arduino library tutorial for it, and it's easy to port to any other microcontroller as well. Okay. Just as a note, though, it's not the code is not the TMP06 and 007 code is totally different, so it's not a drop-in replacement for the 006. You do have to recompile code. Uh, the library is different. You'll have to recompile code and upload it to your microcontroller. Um, they did change the register locations and a couple other things. Okay. What's the temperature range for that? Ooh, I don't remember, but it's you know it's it's a little wider than normal because you, it doesn't have to touch it. I think it can measure up to 200 degrees C. Okay. But you have to make sure that the die itself doesn't get hotter than 150. Okie dokie, and with but that. But check the data sheet for the TMP007. I don't I don't recall off the top of my head. Does the new product good work? Yay.